Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're all doing well and staying safe. In today's video, as you can tell from the title, I wanted to go over some tips that I came up with on how to look expensive on a budget. Now, looking expensive isn't like the most important thing in the world, but when you're trying to look a little bit more sophisticated, put together, there are just some ways that you can do that that really don't take any time or effort that I think that you should just have in your back pocket on those days where you wanna look a little bit more luxe or a little bit more polished. Just try these out. So I've come up with 20, yes, a full 20. It took a while <laughs> and I'm gonna try and have this done in under 20 minutes, that's the goal. So if you are interested, keep watching and I'm hoping that you're at least going to learn like one or two new ones that you hadn't thought of before. It really did take a while. Okay guys, let's waste no time and get right into it with number one, which is uniform dressing. So this just means that if you have a certain style that you gravitate to, you know every single morning when you wake up exactly what that look would be. So this not only saves you time in the morning, but it saves you that stress of having that, oh my goodness, I have nothing to wear moment that nobody likes and is just stressful and happens way too often than it needs to. So tip number one is to find your style, Find one outfit that you know you can put together every single day completely mindlessly and then you'll be saved every single morning when you're getting a little bit overwhelmed looking into your closet. Having a capsule wardrobe really makes this super easy. So if you have things like cream colored knitwear and light or white denim jeans, those are my absolute favorites. Then you can throw those together and you'll look polished every single time. Make sure that every single item in your closet is pressed and wrinkle free before you put it on because that's gonna elevate your outfit before you even put it on your body. If you don't like ironing, invest in a steamer. I just recently got one of the larger ones this Christmas and let me tell you, I've used it so many times already and I'm obsessed. Making sure that your clothes are obviously clean, that's a big one, but just making sure that you look polished will equal looking pricey. Number three is to invest in the basics. Now this doesn't necessarily mean that you have to buy all designer, but if you can swing a couple designer items, I would suggest a handbag and a pair of shoes because these are items that you can literally wear every single day and it won't even make you look like you're repeating them. A designer handbag literally stands out from a mile away and is something that everybody can appreciate the quality of. So if you are interested, that's the one that I would start with before the shoes, but buying a designer pair of shoes just feels great anyway. These Gucci boots are ones that I just got this season and I've worn them countless times already. I'm such a huge fan of them and honestly, every single time I've worn them, I've got a compliment. And it's really not because they're Gucci, but that little logo on the side does just add a little extra pop of something. But it's because they're so timeless and even though they do have the almond toe, obviously the super square toe was really in this year, but having it almond means that it's going to stay looking classic for years to come, even when trends like square toe or really round toe go in or out of style. Next tip is logo is a no-go. This is something that might be a little bit controversial because monogram goes in and out of style constantly. One year it's in, the next year it's not. And in 2020, we saw quite a bit of logo mania, but it was soon replaced by the really, really sleek, label list bags like the Bottega Veneta pouch bag, the cassette bag. Even Hermes has become a lot more seen in 2020 on Instagram, for example, and everybody's been saying that it's because the no logo look is actually so much more worthy to be invested in because it's not something that's gonna date. So think of that the next time you're looking at either a monogram purse or a jacket or anything really, that maybe to scale back is gonna look a little bit more sophisticated. Next is for anybody who's currently in the winter season and it's sweater weather. So I'm not actually talking about just wearing a sweater on your top half, but if you drape it over your shoulders like those 80s prepsters, you know it's going to be stylish and something that's gonna catch people's eye every single time you wear it. 
My next recommendation, I honestly forget already what number we're on, but it's just to have everything in tip top shape. Just keep everything in really, really good condition and you're much more likely to look much more polished. So I would suggest if you do go out and get your shoes a little bit dirty, it's bound to happen. They're touching the ground, that's part of the game, but come home and just give them a quick wipe down with a damp cloth and you're gonna be good to go for the next time you wear them. This one relates to accessories and it's to take some inspo from Jackie O. Especially in this past year, we've seen tortoise so much more often than we've seen black materials used in sunglasses. So the next time you're picking out a pair of sunglasses, go for tortoise shell and take a little inspiration from Jackie Kennedy who always looked in style. Next is to be simply cinched. So this is one of my go-tos, I use it all the time, but it's to cinch in anything that's oversized. So if you have an oversized blazer, an oversized coat, cinch it in at the waist, give yourself more shape and you'll automatically look more polished. I recommended this tip in my coat video, so I'll have that linked in the card above. But in that video, I basically said that I bought a size double XL jacket from H&M that I absolutely love. It's in this beautiful houndstooth print, but it's quite a bit bigger than my regular size. And having the belt to cinch it in, tie it up super tight, makes me look so much more polished and so much more put together with a much nicer hourglass shape just by cinching in the waist. Moving on, you really want to nail it with your nails and what I'm talking about here is not getting nail polish done in like neon colors or with bling on them. There's no need to have super thick acrylic nails. It always looks so much better when they are polished in either a neutral color or just something that's closer to your natural skin tone. Maybe a little pop of color here and there, but nothing neon, nothing black and nothing fake. This tip is for denim and it's to go darker rather than lighter whenever you've got the chance. The next time you're picking out a pair of jeans to buy, go for a darker wash. It's automatically more slimming and it just looks more polished in every single outfit. So go for dark wash over light. This one is all about perfume and it's that your scent can be just as wealthy as your look. So go for something classic and timeless. I'm a huge fan of Chanel number no. five. I basically wear it on the daily. If it's not that, it's the Gabrielle, which I also love, but Chanel number no. five takes the cake. And it's one of those perfumes that I think that you can get away with wearing at any age. So try it out if you haven't already. If number no. five isn't really your cup of tea, just find one perfume that you wear every single day and make it your signature. My next tip is to be draped in jewels. Now this doesn't mean that you have to go out and spend that Cartier or Tiffany money. All I'm saying is that if you want to do a statement jewelry piece, just go for it. You won't regret it. It's not just me that's saying this. Coco Chanel also said, costume jewelry is not made to give women an aura of wealth, but to make them look beautiful. It doesn't need to be designer, it just needs to look beautiful. Now this one is the boss combo. If you've got a blazer and you've got a turtleneck, wear those two pieces together and you'll look so put together and so powerful every single time. There's no way that you can go wrong with this. You're going to look amazing. This blazer that I have here is a vintage Dior and I've just paired it with a very, very simple black turtleneck underneath. The black turtleneck you can really get anywhere. You can find amazing ones at stores like Uniqlo. Their quality is amazing, their fit is really good, and their price point, even for things like cashmere, are incredible. So go with a blazer and a turtleneck the next time you're wanting to feel a little bit more sophisticated. This look will have you every time. Okay, next is another one that I talked about in my coat video and it's white in winter time. Wear your white in winter time because it's such a breath of fresh air. Instead of wearing the constant black outerwear, everybody's wearing the same thing. Why wouldn't you want to stand out? And it's not in a way that's super trendy. Anything white in winter time is always going to look amazing. 
moving onward, make sure it fits, whatever it is. It doesn't matter what sort of clothing item it is. If it's a top, a pair of pants, outerwear, anything, literally anything. If it doesn't fit, it's not gonna look as good as if it did. So make sure that your clothing isn't swallowing you whole or cutting off circulation because neither of those things are a good look. But if it's too big, get it tailored. Moving on, wear your pearls, girls. Whatever you're wearing, chances are a pair of pearl earrings is gonna go with it. Honestly, pearls are something that I wear basically on the daily, and switching it up, you can wear a pearl necklace, a pearl choker, a strand of pearls if that's your vibe. Pearls are just a go-to that are always gonna look great, always gonna look stylish, and can be worn at any age with any style. Okay, monochrome is talked about a lot, but it's something that looks so good. Whether it's black on black, my favorite, white on white, or literally anything in between. You could wear an all beige outfit, you could wear an all red outfit. It really doesn't matter if it's a color that's consistent from head to toe. My suggestion for this is to not go tonal, but to go for the exact same hue. If a look is tonal, it'll mean that the colors are in the same family, but don't necessarily have the exact same hue to them. But my favorite way to do monochrome is the exact same, like literally the exact same color. Moving on, timing is everything, and I'm not talking about the time of day that you wear your outfit, I'm talking about wearing a watch. It doesn't need to be the Chanel J12 or the Cartier Tank, it can be anything. As long as there's a watch completing your outfit, you're bound to look so much more polished and chic and expensive. The one that I've been wearing most lately is really just a very cheap and cheerful one, but because it's all the same tone of gold, there are fewer things that can go wrong with it. If you're going to be wearing the same watch every day, I would suggest one with a metal strap. Strap. The mesh metal is something that Daniel Wellington started a few years ago and is something that has just kept on trend for the past few years. I personally love it. I find that it's super comfortable and again, I don't mind wearing it on top of my sleeves. There's really no point in wearing a watch if it's going to be unseen anyway. So try it over top of your sleeve for a different yet very polished look. Next, we're going into the wild, and I'm not talking literally, I'm talking about animal print. There's a very fine line in between a leopard pump and a zebra jumpsuit. And I think that it's really important to know the difference. So if you are gonna add some animal print to your look, go more subtle than overboard. This is not something that you wanna do head to toe. It's something that you just wanna add subtly to an outfit. So these snakeskin mules are things that I wear constantly in the summertime. And it just adds a little bit of pop and a little bit of pattern to an outfit that can otherwise be monochrome. It's super easy to wear, they're very, very comfortable, and the pointed toe is also something that makes them look a little bit more classic with a pattern that is otherwise a little bit more out there. Last but not least, it's all about hair. Make sure when you wake up, the first thing you do is give it a brush. The last thing that you want is to have unkept hair that looks like it's either a couple days old, and if it is, just zhuzh it up with a little bit of dry shampoo. My favorite is from the brand Batiste. It has never done me wrong, and it doesn't leave that white cast that some of them do that just makes it look a little bit too obvious that you haven't washed your hair in the past couple days. I prefer, instead of the tousled look, to have just one straight part in your hair, whether it's in the middle or off to one side, it's something that elevates a look that's so simple to do. So play around to see which sort of part looks best with your style, and you're bound to look so much more expensive, lax, polished, sophisticated, with literally not spending a penny. Next is natural makeup. There's nothing polished about a face that's overdone or has too much color going on in it, has a bold eye and a bold lip and a lot of contour. Stick to just one of those things and your aesthetic is gonna look so much more natural and natural never goes out of style. The natural look is generally just more expensive. If you look on the runways, Chanel, for example, always has a very, very minimal makeup look on their models and it looks amazing 
every single time. So if you are looking for some more neutral makeup inspiration, check out some videos of a Chanel runway and you'll get to see how less is really more when it comes to makeup. Okay, those are the tips. I hope that you were able to take some style inspo from this video. So let me know down below in the comment section which tip was your favorite and I'll see you all in my next one. Bye guys.